G'day and uh, welcome to our Zoom meeting this afternoon with the very famous alligator blood owner and horse racing owner, Alan Andres. How are you going, Alan? Yeah, good. Thanks, Mitch. Um, uh, very kind of you to say famous, but others would say infamous. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. And of course, the horse we all want to know about, we'll get straight off the bat, alligator blood. How is he? What's been going on? When can we expect to see him back at the trials and racetracks? Just tell us how he's going. And obviously, he's got a cult following right around Australia. Tell us how he's going and what's happening with him. Yeah, look, it's been um, an amazing, uh, nearly 12 months, Golden Eagle um, in Sydney. And um, uh, he, he's, he's had a, an incredible team of people that, you know, we identified the problem through uh, scintigraphy, uh, what they back, uh, you know, the, the um, vertebrae were touching, which was giving enormous pain. So from that journey, um, the University of Queensland uh, at Gatton, the vet's clinic there under uh, Dr. Ben Ahern, uh, did an amazing operation on him. Um, you know, we heard all stories that Al might have got a bit sour or dour or that he may have had this problem, Mitch, since the uh, All-Star Mile. And even when he went down in the Silver Eagle, you know, he went down in the barriers, you know, he still fought hard. His willpower is there. And I'm pleased to say that with the rehabilitation program with the Robbins family, um, that's John, John Bond and Faye, they did the early works when he came out of the ops, spent months with him, uh, you know, slow progression, uh, getting him back to fitness. Uh, he then transitioned to Billy Healy. And um, look, this horse is better than what we've ever seen as a two-year-old. Um, you know, there's no pain. Uh, physically, he looks amazing. Uh, mentally, he's got that killer instinct, you know, wanting to be uh, ahead of other horses. He's got a kind eye and, uh, you know, beautiful head carriage that says, I'm back. And I've posted a few things on that you might have seen. Mitch and um, yeah, the journey I that... on Twitter. And just for anyone who doesn't follow you on Twitter, can you just give us your Twitter handle so they can check out those Alligator Blood videos? It's just at Alligator Blood. Um, so people can look that up and see that. And we, we try and keep, uh, you know, he's got um, at last count nearly over 100 and something thousand people following from around the world. Yeah, he really um, does have a huge following, doesn't he? Oh yeah, and you know these hats—they've been, been—we've um, exhausted the supplies of those. We we do have a function on Sunday, Mitch, which we've called the Alligator Blood Birthday Batch uh, Bash. Oh, okay, um, wonderful. Where's that on now? That's at Sunshine Coast. Um, okay. He's doing an exhibition exhibition gallop. Uh, we've got nine hundred hats that are going out already in demand on that day, um, and it's all about uh, yeah, showing the journey of Al, who's loving life you know he loves the beach which he's never been doing that before um rolling around in sand uh, out in the water it's great on his legs and honestly without that pain it's been incredible he's been doing gallops uh, in the last few weeks coming home in less just under 22 seconds for the last couple of uh, 400 so that's pretty pretty exciting stuff yeah that's having... really slick time only um elite yeah. horses can clock that kind of sectionals and he's not getting out of gear I yeah, just, yeah, just doing it under his own steam, is he? Yeah, if he if he um, he shows us he's going to have a serious gallop uh, on Sunday. Um, we want to, you know, he's the, the old movie of Secretariat, Mitch. Uh, let him let him run, let him run. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's it's going to be amazing. So we're, we're pumped for him. He's he's just a, uh, you know, I put a few posts up with his birthday with a um, Stevie Wonder song, Happy Birthday, and it, it literally brings a tear to my eye because he's. It's just the will to win and, and never give up. It's all there. So, of course, how old does he turn on Sunday? Yeah, so he'll be five. Um, okay. And, you know, we're um, he's, he's stronger. He's uh, In fact, with the rehabilitation, he's really had a, a wonderful, you know, probably eight or nine months now um, of slow progression and getting to the, the, the conditions he's in. And, and then after Sunday, uh, his, his new journey starts down south. Okay, and what's the 
um, I suppose, the program for him once he heads to Sydney, apart yeah, from uh, being locked down in the Randwick stables. <laughs> Yeah, he's um he, well. He's he, obviously he's going to you know, Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott. Uh, they'll take command of Val. Uh, there's been some preliminary discussions, and I know that they're following through because he's still under the traineeship of of Billy until that transition happens okay. over the next week. Uh, acceptances are due early next week, so he'll be nommed for both the Epsom Group One and the Cox Plate. Um, okay. The lead up races for that will be in the hands of Gay. And the uh, obviously the uh, the jockeys and things, and I'm thrilled that you know uh, they've got the resources and they've got the staff and the firepower. Um, I did talk to Adrian the other day. He's confirmed that Al's one of the one of the few that'll be wandering down to Botany Bay to keep up with his beach work. He, he, that's just been a whole new uh, change in his psychic, really, for being oh, down okay. there. That's yeah. terrific. Yeah. So, um, so is that where to... Gay takes her uh, horses? Is it down to Botany Bay when they want? Yeah, yeah. They have, uh, work and stress-free yep. on the joints. Oh, okay. Yeah, which the salt water is fantastic for them. It's, it's, yeah. it's just the outlook. If you change the uh, environment, uh, and that's what we've noticed with Al, you know, he knows that when he's at the track, he's there to he's there to perform. And when he's off, he, he's got this time off, if you like. And it's it's been wonderful. Not stuck in a stall, you know, 24-7. It's yeah, it can fantastic. be claustrophobic, can't it? That's right. Well, look at people with lockdown, you know. How, how's yeah, that going? exactly. Yeah, I definitely feel for all those in Sydney and shout out to anyone watching from Sydney. Hope you're staying safe and um, hopefully, like you say, um, our um, alligator blood's a fighter and he t instills the traits of fighting and fighting the good fight and never giving up, so... That's oh. particularly at the moment, isn't it, with what Sydney yeah. siders are going through? I think that is the that is the message I've been saying since the day, you know, um, he won that first race in Queensland. Um, uh, you know, you, 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 as I understand it, you were there and I was there. Yep. And um, when you're coming seven or eight lengths last, second last, uh, and you're flying home, you know that the horse has got a will to, to continue, never give up. And that's what his name is. It's that poker term I picked. It means to be resilient, uh, tenacious, and just don't give up. You know, you not you mightn't win all the time, but you know you you put in and you just don't give up. And I think we see that with the Olympics and the swimmers, and you know some of the the other sports. Um, yeah, people... hasn't, um, Ariane Tempness been terrific, the winning the double, and like you said, never give up, just getting there in the last stroke. That's it. Been That's it. Scene. That's it. If, if you know you've put in your best, well, that's the reward you get, no matter whether it's gold or silver or bronze, but um, or whether you come sixth or seventh. But that's that's what I love about Al. You know, to see a horse that's pain free, I'm I'm just I just in awe of what may eventuate. If if he did what he did through that journey with pain uh, leading up to the Australian Guineas, then I think the other horses should be on notice. Something special might be coming. Yeah, well, that really excites me to hear that. And I'm sure his legions of fans would love to hear that too. Um, and we were speaking briefly before we came on air. You said you've got another 22 horses on the books under yep. the Easy Bonds ownership. Do you want to tell That's us a right. bit about some of those and ones maybe the punters out there can follow? Yeah, absolutely. Um one of, so we've got 22. So the syndicate is uh, Uncle Jeff, and Arnie, Robin, and myself, the three of us. Um, I'm the syndicate manager, uh, which I operate through my trusts. But um, the we, we thought we would have a few earlier starters, uh, but we tipped them out um, just to give them a bit more time. But we've got a group of three-year-olds, and the ones to watch uh, is one called Blood Thunder. He actually trains with Al, and I think he's looking up to his his older brother by another mother. So okay. um, he, 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 there's a lot of education going on there when you've got a superstar like Al with a young yeah, not a bad training through. partner. Yeah, so Blood Thunder is is really tightened up. Um, physically looks amazing. He's a chestnut. Um, he, had a, he got a third in his first start and we tipped him out to give him a bit more time. There's something, that, you know, we've got high expectations of him. 
we have another uh, brother by another mother uh, called Bronze Dragon. Uh, Bernie, Bernie is is will will we'll give. Um, sorry, there, Mitch. Bernie yeah. will give um, uh, Blood a run for his money as well. Um, we have a written tycoon who we've called Written with Blood. Um, his breeding and pedigree and his uh, the way he's uh, performing in his um, pre-training has been absolutely awesome. He's one to really watch. Um, Wolf Moon is, uh, we had expectations of him having some big group races in the spring, but uh, unfortunately the Eagle Farm concrete runway knocked the <laughs> hell out and gave him some bad bruising. So we tipped him out. We won't run there again with him, um, but he's, he's no. back in work. And he is, he's actually, it did him the world of good, to be honest. Um, he's enjoying the beach and Billy Hilly's training uh, program. So that's awesome. We have another one called um, Designated Survivor. Um, they're all, they've all got a meaning, uh, these names, but um, he's, a, he's a wonderful Vancouver. So you'll see uh, more of him. We have uh, two fillies that uh, one did very well. She was almost going to go into the Oaks and uh, got knocked up a bit by the Eagle Farm track again called Not Too Hard, but she'll be back in action. Um, Island Lady is in a stern. She's really showing some potential. Um, so you'll see a lot of her coming through the ranks. Um, I'm just trying to think of the others now. Um, uh, oh, uh, Capitalist, they, they are a sensational breed. Um, that's yeah, they've already shown that on the racetrack in their short oh. time, haven't they? Yeah, so we've called him Private Banker. He's, he's okay. targeting the, uh, the uh, January campaigns, which we're looking at. Um, so there's a combination there. We can go to the um, English Millennium Race Series, or we've got the oh, Magic okay. Million Series. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a class act. We've got a Shalar, uh, which we've called Irish Raider. Um, look, we're, we're pumped. Billy's, Billy's pumped about the portfolio we have, and each and every one of them will, will surprise us with uh, seeing Al's colours you know, coming through the ranks. Yeah, I can't wait to see some of those step out on track and uh, hopefully we can land a bit of a uh, winning bet there. Just tell us quickly about the plunge you landed on debut. That's a funny story. Yeah, of alligator look, I had, blood, should I say. Al's, um, I've had two plunges, which I didn't share the second one with you, but the first one was his very first race and um, he wasn't uh, travelling too well in his trials. David had said that we'd probably put him out after his first race, to be honest. And uh, we got $8 uh, for him. I got $8 and had a few bob on him uh, each way. Um, I was on the track uh, at the post and I thought we've gone for all money. There's no way this horse is going to make up seven or eight lengths, particularly leading up to the turn. And lo and behold, I was getting excited because I thought, gee, this is, he's amazing. This bloke just keeps coming. And, um, Written with ease was well in front, Stewie Kendrick's horse. Uh, and I thought, oh, this, how good is this going to be? If I get my money back on a place, you know, a few bob extra, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> but seeing fly past by, you know, half a head, that said, that, the money aside, the bet was incredible. But yeah. the, the thrill of the race and what he did, I knew then that every time he goes out, I'll put money on him. So, you know, nine races later, or eight, you know, I think it was nine in a row, uh, of course, the bank built up pretty solidly. Not, yeah, absolutely. Not Loving that. Good odds. But uh, it, that was the time after that race that I then latched on to um, taking a big plunge uh, for the Caulfield Guineas. I had 3,300 each way at 240 to 1. Oh, so geez. who bet you that? Oh, I won't say, but yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I had, that, I had that locked in. Uh, when he was coming down the straight in the Caulfield Guineas, I almost wanted to ring the bank up and just bank seven or eight hundred thousand. <laughs> uh, the old story: count your chickens too early, and of course um, he got pipped at the post. Now, not whinging because I had him at the place for significant yeah, what, 60 money, sixty to one or something, but forty to geez. one. Yeah. And that was just a simple case. We didn't see the um, the winner coming, did he? No, how do you've caught? No. How do you've caught a glimpse of him half a stride sooner? He would have kicked back and won. Absolutely, like, you know, Al, like you did to Catalyst in the um, CSAs. Yeah, absolutely. No, I have no doubt that um, if you'd have seen him, he'd have kicked again. So, but look, you know, good good news to the team at Super Seth. They're a great bunch of guys. Um, I love 
close races like that, you know, where he did yeah, the Yeah, it wasn't Richmond. a fantastic race. And speaking of fantastic races, I still think one of the best races I've seen for a long time is the CSAs where the Kiwi champion three-year-old catalyst went toe-to-toe with alligator blood right from the 600 meter mark it was just shades of bone crash of us as our waverly star wasn't it oh, sensational and look they um you know chipperfield is a fantastic he's not training now but certainly you know we got on really well and it didn't matter who won that race at the end of the day that was that'll be immortalized in in racing replays um uh, if you look at the the horses that al's beaten you know in that three-year career three-year-old career uh, there's a lot of the fallen by the wayside. I mean, Alabama Express has been retired. Super Seth has gone. Groundswell's, you know, been struggling. You had Chenia there, um, Rockabasharani. I mean, all of these horses either went to Hong Kong or were injured. And, and Catalyst has taken a long time for recovery. I, I see these. Uh, he'll be racing in the spring in New Zealand and possibly coming to Sydney. So, oh, okay, that'll be interesting. Oh, look, if he came to if he came and, and crossed Al's paths, that would be just sensational. Um, yeah, it'd be great to see him match again. But obviously, a fortnight after that CSA, he's in his brilliant Group One win at the um, at Flemington there over the mile. He um, he certainly did a job on Catalyst that day. Whether or not Catalyst was feeling the pinch from the CSA's run, while well, he probably was, but there's every. Yeah reason to expect alligator blood was feeling the same effects but that didn't show on the day even like you said he's i just love matt hill's call that day that he's yeah. got a pocket full of aces and he big heart pumping <laughs> classic call I, I think though when i in hindsight i look back that that was a tough campaign for al you know he he'd been traveling uh, racing for the better part of eight months with not much time off and um uh when i look back you know, we went one race too many with the All-Star Mile. Um, and it's from there that the, the specialists are saying that, you know, what what was taken out of Catalyst in the CS Hayes was reflected in the, the the Guineas. And I think the same had happened. Those two races then put pressure on and, you know, that was reflected in the All-Star Mile. And, you know, we, sh- we probably should have had more um, veterinary work done to really dig into the you know what was going on and i'm a big promoter now of scintigraphy uh you know 40 percent about scintigraphy and what that is yeah look it's 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 a bit like um you know if you're getting a cat scan or one of those scans and they put the the dye into your body it tracks it through the through the nervous system and the bones and it, it can accurately pick up where the where the pressure points are or the problems are in the in those structures whereas x-rays don't go so far and generally it's not picked up in the x-rays particularly kissing spine um which means that you're missing something there of course you you then put it down to well he needs um chiropractic work or massage work and etc and and of course that pressure in that part of the body uh, at the in the back they compensate which means that they're compensating somewhere else so you end up with other injuries you know in the other near or offside yeah, leg starts to take you wear and tear on other parts of the body yeah for sure and I, and I and i can tell you now that um poor poor al uh he, you know he, he just goes through the pain barrier if you look at the golden eagle you know he's, he's not stretching out as much as he would have normally and he's compensating but he's still trying you know this yeah yeah he never the- stops trying and i think that's why he's got the love and affection from all the racing public that he does yeah, well, I'm glad he does because uh, there's a lot of the public don't like me, which is fine. But uh, look, my interest, <laughs> my interest is the horse. Um, the other bit of news I can share with you, Mitch, is that I've never forgotten the the effect that it had on us and the 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 tarnish that was given with that uh, you know the drug test that happened with the All Star uh, with the Magic Millions you know, when that came through. You know, I know David Van Dyke. He only got a twenty thousand dollar fine, and and the conclusion was no one knows what what happened, whether it was deliberate or uh, inadvertence or mistaken. Yeah. So um, I promised back then, I made a promise to Alan that I'd clear his name. And um, on the 26th of August, the the big battle lines are drawn with the Supreme Court where I've, uh, my legal team is challenging the disqualification. Um, so that's going to be, hopefully, we're, we're feeling confident. It'll be first time ever that's happened as an owner with uh, disqualification. Um, okay. The legal tactics look pretty good. 
and I'm hoping that I can clear Al's name before the spring starts in, in a big way. So. so this definitely isn't like some people have said and it's about the money or the, oh. this is just about clearing the horse's name. This is clearing his name. Uh, I said it from day one. If I was worried about money, I would have sold out for three point two million. So, yeah, it, it, the history books are not kind to the circumstances of what has happened with drugs. And I got a lot of the ideas to my legal team through a horse called um, Dancer's Image that won the nineteen sixty eight Kentucky Derby on similar circumstances, and they had a lot of regrets about the way they handled that legal process to overturn that uh, disqualification and from that lesson uh, my legal team have picked up some finer points that will certainly shake the way in which they treat owners and disqualifications so yeah uh, history okay, repeats itself and, well best yeah. of luck and let's hope he can we can get a favorable outcome on the 26th is it 26th of august mitch yeah so okay. otherwise and, um, we all look forward to do his big racing yeah and maybe if uh you have 